Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode 28 of my modded Factorio playthrough. In this episode, we are going to work on getting green science set up. Enjoy. Let's make another new line. Let's see, I'll do the red first. Actually, let's do green first. Because I'm thinking that um, most research takes the same amount of both packs, if not all of them. I'm not sure exactly how that works. Seems like it's basically takes the same amount. Okay. Actually, it might not be too bad idea to put them both on the same the same uh, line here, so we can see the total amount of resources that goes into everything. So this requires the Atmos reaction nodes and instrumentation. So let's make those. I guess we should set this to. Let's go with one for now. So we make instrumentation, which is out of stuff we already make. However, okay, this one cannot be done in the electronics assembler. Most of them can, but this one cannot. So microcircuits in an assembler, like electronics assembler. Microwave for an electronics assembler. Wafer stamp. Interestingly enough, not in an electronics assembler. And now we're back to our base resources. So there's that. And then the other one we need is the reaction node. Which is done with tinned copper wire and regular copper wire. Okay. So there we go. To get one green science per second, we're going to need this. So I can already tell that we can't, we're not going to have too much of an output on here because our factory just isn't going to be able to support it for now. Which isn't a bad thing. It's just something to keep in mind. Okay, well, since we're making... one per second of green. Let's make one per second of red. Let's knock it up to make it look nice and even. And actually this one is so simple we probably can just keep it inside here. Because just the cores made out of iron plates. The coils made out of copper plates. Okay. So in total, if we made one per second, we would be at five iron plates output and four copper plates, which is quite a bit. We can't, our factory can't really support any more than this. So how many machines is that? I mean, it's still a lot of machines. It's 12 machines. So it's not like this is a small amount of research here. So it's 12, three, and then I see. So one and a half. So the perfect ratio of this would be two per second. Even though our factory could never keep up with it, it's a perfect ratio. <laughs> Are these perfect? Uh, yes. Well, this part isn't, but... So if we increase this to two, now we have 24 machines. Six, three, three, six, three, and then this one, which is not that important. We will have no hope of ever giving it enough resources, at least not right now. It's not that difficult of an ask to expand our production. We have space. I mean, kind of, kind of have space and kind of don't. But when we unlock the next tier of refining, we could increase the productivity of our various things, taking up some of this space, and then we could double this up, at least double this up. We have enough space for that to get to 12 per second, change everything to yellow belts, and then we'll be able to keep up with it. So I think I'm going to future build a little bit by building it to handle the entire factory's output if it's available. Might wanna have a priority splitter in there somewhere to make sure it's not sucking up every last little bit of resource. But I mean, I guess it's it's also as simple as just uh, 
disabling the research. So there's that too. We set this to two. And what do the ratios look like there? Well, see, then you do two, and then it makes the ratio weird. Although I think it was already weird at one. Yeah. So this one actually needs to be doubled as well. So when you consider both of them together, we need four per second for it to be a perfect ratio for the entire set. It's probably better to build up and not have enough resources than to have enough resources but not be producing stuff fast enough. So let's build up, even though we can't keep up with it. Okay, we've got a setup here. Bad news is, is there's no room for lights. <laughs> in the middle, anyway. Might have to artificially create them. Something like that, so we can see. So the two inputs come in through here. They're not inserter limited at all, so I just jammed as many of them in there, as many assembly machines as I could. And then the green science comes out through there. So now we need to make these two things. Let's make the more complicated one first. Looks like we're in another situation of not having fast enough inserters. So we're going to have to be cute with this. So we have three machines. Hmm. I do have an idea. Something like this here where it inserts on the far side here and inserts wherever here and then they will combine back to uh, the solid belt without any kind of shenanigans. And it's still not going to be enough inserters for now. We need 16 and a half. And we have 12. However, when we get fast inserters, we will be able to do it with this setup. Without having to rebuild anything. Looks like we could do direct inserting here if we can make it work. Let's try to. Okay, so that has to be there. Again, there's going to be a slight inserter limitation, which will no longer be the case with fast inserters, so we'll just deal with it for now. But it looks like we'll be able to do longhand inserter from here to direct insert. Make things a little less complicated. Now we just need to position this uh, next to here and make it look cleaner. And probably move it down, too. Move this down here. I like to build things kind of not in their final location, in modules like this. And then when I'm ready to actually build it, it looks all good. Then I'll put it in the place that makes it look square. Because otherwise, I'm worried both about the logic of the setup and the squareness of the setup. And that's a little bit too much to manage at the same time. A lot of clicking and removing things. So I worry about the square first, and then when it's square, then I move it. Because now I can make it line up just right. Same problem where there's no room for lights. Well, we'll see what it looks like at night. Probably gonna run out of these bots soon. Do we have more? don't have more bots, but we do have more repair packs which turn into bots. That's all of that, but we're going to have some more. It needs to come in there and come even further down the chain to combine. So we're making the instrumentation, but we need to make the reaction notes. Another note about why I'm putting these belts on the bottom, the, the side that's going to be closer to the bus, because it looks kind of messy, like why not put them up here and have them out of the way and objectively more square <laughs> and just have the, the bottom of the machines lined up with the bus perfectly. Well, it's about expansion. So what happens if we wanted to make this setup twice as big? 
well, we could. It's actually fairly simple to do. We would just, uh, find the exact point to drag and drop it. Something like this. And then, it's not going to let us because some positions of power poles and water. But let's say it, it, we could. We could just plop it right here. And now we've expanded the setup without moving anything. If we would have put all of these lines up here, then we would have had to move stuff. So with it set up like this, all we have to do is copy the setup and just make sure the belts are fast enough and we're good to go. So that's kind of why I'm doing it in the slightly less square looking way. So we need to have one tin wire machine and two copper wire machines. I'm just looking over here, I was like, well, we've already kind of done something like that. It's not perfect, but it will technically work for that setup. Let's just remove some of the extraneous stuff here. So this can go up there. That is the input. It's technically a little unwise to be picking up from a corner. When you have a fast moving belt and slow moving inserter, sometimes it gets confused about picking up from corners, but this should be okay because these are always going to be fast inserters. They're the fastest available because of the, they're inserter limited. So, And then on the other side of this there will just be uh, the copper coming in and I can't put that there because the bronze pipes are in the way. And that should be the whole green science setup. So now we need to figure out where to put it course get rid of all this other stuff. Now, where to put this big old thing? It is kind of annoying how rubite's in the way, but it is our only mine with rubite, so we don't really have a choice. So probably putting it down here somewhere. So it needs to be somewhere over here, but Looks like all of this is in the way. Alright, time to find out if this massive thing works. It should. But you never really know until you actually hook it up. Alright, looks like I need to extend our guidelines. Alright, let's test this out. A lot of these are inserter limited, so shrug. But we'll see how it works as is. Okay, seems good so far. Time to keep going. We need iron here as well. Seems like a bit of a missed opportunity not to combine it with both belts, but we can probably uh, set this up with lung inserters. Pretty much using all of the iron. Grab that. Okay, so it doesn't look like it likes stone tablets. Noted. So what does stone look like? Alright. It's catching up essentially, but if I do this... Bam, it'll be caught up. And I guess all of these furnaces are going to fill up too. 
they gonna fill up with a thousand? Probably. Hmm. We have to let it run its course. And we can set the output priority on these the other direction. So we can hook that back up and let everything uh, do its thing. Using lots of power. Almost all of the wood. It's getting used up. Not a bad thing. It just means we're getting full use out of all of those uh, tree growing machines. Alright, let's get all this hooked up and see how it works. Since that's direct inserted, not much to see there. Okay, so I forgot to input tin plates and circuit boards on this guy. Looks like there's no way around it. I'm gonna have to uh, pick their, everything up and space it out. Okay, that should be the final hookup. Okay, seems to be limited on that inserter. Ah, yes, looks like we needed to have two of them. Not the one. That's going to make everything all out of whack again. Because of course it does. Alright. Still inserter limited. But we kind of knew that. Actually, this setup could have been a little cleaner if I would have just uh, done this straight down. Oh well. It doesn't really make a difference either way because we have one inserter here and one inserter here. So there's either two spaces on the left or two spaces on the right. So yeah, that wasn't the greatest thing to do right there. Could have uh, picked it up from across the way, but oh well. There's no such thing as a perfect setup in Angel Bob's. You'll always find a better way to do it. <laughs> Especially right after you build something. You'll really find a better way to do it. But we have been producing green science there. So eventually it'll make its way to the bottom. Everything looks pretty good. How's the rest of the factory doing here? Seems like it's keeping up. Because of our inserter limitation, we're not quite using up all the belts yet. And with stone, it's going to take quite a while to fill that all up. But it will eventually. With green science, you also need red science. Luckily though, it's much simpler. 20 machines making the red science, and then three each making the components. Should be able to just build it right next door here without too much fanfare. Uh-oh. Got gaps of wood in here. Which means here we're just about maxed out. We are using wood to make compost, which is quite inefficient. So we can do farming to improve that capacity, but for now, it's probably not important. We're basically getting completely free energy right now, not using any coal at all, so it's not that big a deal if we have to start using a little bit of coal. One thing we never did is upgrade our labs, which we can now do with all of this steel and uh, splitter equipment and all of that. So we might as well. Looks like we have the resources for it. Also, as it turns out, we have to make them. Because these red labs here can only take red science. So, if we want to be able to use green science, we're going to have to upgrade the labs. So that red science looks very similar to the green. You can see it looks quite symmetrical, which is pleasing. See what I'm planning here, where the science packs now go between the two and combine into one nice belt. 
That side is good. And I imagine this side will be good as well. Okay. Well, there's our output. All of this factory. All of this craziness. <laughs> Just for this one belt here. And now we need somewhere to burn that science. Or consume that science. It's not burner science anymore. Mm. It's not that it's particularly difficult to do. Or it takes that much space. And since this is kind of a weird dead area that we can't really use right now because of the rubite mining, uh, let's put it here. And then we can send the science just down the bus like this. Man, we're getting close. 3.5% for Sephirite. We need Prospector. So how's this setup going at full blast? Seems pretty reasonable so far. Close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get it close. And... Kaboom. Looking good. Whew, well here we go. Finally, green science ready to go. Well, there's lots of things we can research. There's only one thing that we should. And that is Prospector. We need to access the Prospector radar so we could get access to more Sapphirite. Let's see how quickly this goes. And what the power looks like. See if it can keep up as well. Yep, it looks like it does. But power is <laughs> lacking, unfortunately. But we're researching. That all looks good. And it's researching relatively quickly. Of course, it uh, it's probably going much faster than it normally would. It's just a, a giant buffer of machines, science packs, intermediate products, and all that other stuff. So sooner or later, it's going to fall behind. But that is a large buffer, so it should allow us to burst research things when we want to. And part of my playstyle is to only research things when I need them. And so that happens in bursts. I'm not the kind of player that uh, researches things all the time. So in that sense, it's good to have this ability to just burst through research real fast when we need it. So already at 27% and just been talking for a little bit. But we need more power because we are running low and we're not doing anything besides doing science. So we definitely need some more power. But that's going to have to wait until the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.